that's a good way to do it, man. Totally. That's just a great way to do it so there's no misunderstandings. You know, usually in comedy club, they pack them up like sardines. People you don't know sitting at your table. That's uncomfortable as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you really yeah. can't go fucking off because I got some people sitting at my fucking table, you know. <laughs> so this is good. It keeps people fucking honest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations on uh, the fucking great podcast you're doing. You're fucking, you know, you're scoring, man. ACDC, fucking uh, Rob Halford. You got the fucking drummer. You got everybody, you know. Congratulations. Can you believe it? Dean, man, I believe anything nowadays. You know, as long as you put hard work into it, anything is fucking possible, you know. And the word gets out. And even guys like us, we get a break from time to time, you know. Old guys, you know, old dogs, even old dogs get a warm side on the sidewalk from time <laughs> to time, you know. So it's great to see you from afar doing great things. I know how much of a fan you are. I mean, if you could interview Bond from the grave, you would. You know, you'd put a cigarette in his mouth and just let it fly, so. <laughs> yeah, it was it was wild because, you know, I knew I was going to interview them seven months ago and I got to hear the record seven months ago. Secretly, I had to sign an NDA. So I had to keep that secret for seven months. And there was a point about a month ago where I was like, ah, that record's not going to come out. I'm just going to do a solo episode about how I heard the record. And then I said, ah, I better not do that. You know, Columbia Records trusted me. I'm not going to do that. And sure enough, two days later, I get an email. Okay, well, the record's going to come out, and you're going to interview him next week. And I was like, oh, thank God I didn't say anything, you know? It was, it was unbelievable. And then I had to interview him at 2.30 in the morning because they were in Australia and London, two separate places, Bon or sorry, Brian and uh, Angus. So I was up all night waiting to interview him and then once it was done i couldn't sleep all night i was just laying there like wow that just went down <laughs> you know uh dean you're the last man standing you know it's you burr marin whitney cummings i mean there's just a couple of you left eric griffin they're just holding on you know how do you see it you know i i I, you know, people keep hitting me. Are you going to move? Are you going to move? Are you going to move? And um, it, there's two things that are a problem with that. One is uh, I'm born and raised in California. I, you know, I, I, I lived in New York for three years, loved it. Um, and I would be there. I would have been there all summer. I love doing East Coast, West Coast. I love that more than anything. Um, I, I wouldn't mind moving somewhere and trying something out. Say, uh, you know, I love Palm Springs, Joshua Tree, you know, get out there in the desert and do your podcast out there. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not, there's nothing holding me on here now. A lot of people are gone. It's just mostly I want to make the right decision uh, because it's a big decision. You get somewhere and they're like, oh my God, I don't like this. And you start to have a, uh, I, I live alone, you start to have a meltdown. Um, so I, I don't really know, but I do know that uh, to afford this uh, LA living is, is not going to last very much longer. You know? Are you feeling it a little now? Are you has the road taken a lot away from you financially? I mean, are you dipping into your savings? What's going on? Yeah, there's, well, of course we got zero uh, money for eight months and thank God for CBD lion and, and you, I mean, you hooked that up and without CBD lion, I would probably be, uh, you know, uh, living on a couch at somebody's place which I've done before. I'm not afraid to do that. I just don't want to be somebody's burden. I'm a grown man, 54, and I don't want to be somebody's couch surfer at this uh, age of my life. Especially uh, now with the COVID and whatnot. Right, right, right. I don't want to be, hey, let me sack on your couch with this guy, COVID. Anybody who lets you sleep on that couch, that COVID's got fucking, that couch got COVID. So it's a COVID couch anyway. So what yeah. the fuck? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, 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 is, uh, it is a weird time. And I always know that when I got into comedy, nothing was guaranteed. There is nothing guaranteed in the arts and you just keep on pushing. But there's not a job I can get right now. You know what do I, I do? I, I, I was selling motorcycles before this and playing music before that. Those two are out. <laughs> I did construction 40 years ago. I don't even remember how to do that. And I uh, worked at Foster Freeze. So there's my four jobs. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I, I doubled down. I started another podcast and I bust my ass. And now I've got two podcasts. I've got the Grail, which is out on Wednesdays. And then I'm doing this and I've got the Patreon. And the Patreon is really, uh, really helping me, man. The Patreon people are, are gold. That and CBD line are, are pay, keeping the lights on. I got to tell you, Patreon the people are gold. I'm having, you know, I don't even know what's stopping me from getting off of regular social media and just doing everything on pay. It just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have friend, you know, like it just wouldn't be fair. But Patreon for me is so much fun. It's not even about, it just, it, if it wasn't for Patreon, I would be in an insane asylum right now. Patreon kept me whole in July, August, September. Just answering the emails and rapping with people, you know? Yeah. To see what they were going through, you know. Whenever I would get anxiety, I would hit the emails in uh, July and August and September. And that really helped a lot with communicating with people, you know? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I don't bullshit people. I look at it as like I've got about 400 true fans they say if you have a thousand true fans you can survive doing art the rest of your life i've got about 400 i'm not one of those guys like oh i sold out three nights and the, the fourth one was almost that's all bullshit man it's papered rooms i'm out there slugging away one fan at a time trying to get it and i've got about 400 solid ones on patreon and man i love it i talk to them on zoom fest every weekend we get on, I Zoom with all these guys. We talk records, movies, comedy, everything. And uh, they're gold, man, because they are the people, they're into the same stuff I'm into, the music, the films, comedy. And so we have great conversations. And, and that helps me on the weekend when I'm not doing comedy. I'm home shooting the shit with these guys or talking to you on the phone or, or hanging with Ian or Marin or, or, you know, that kind of stuff really uh, helps and, and patreon wow man it is gold and these people did not drop off i thought oh it's gonna they're gonna be out of here but they're they're doubled no, down. they doubled down they're good people <laughs>